Welcome back to Closing Arguments. I'm Julie Grant, filling in this week for Vinnie Politan while he enjoys some much-deserved time off. He's going to be back next week on Monday, and I'll be back on my show in the morning opening statements. We begin this 9 p.m. hour with not one but two huge verdicts in the take care of Maya civil trial. Let's take a listen together to part of that first emotional verdict. We the jury return the following verdict. Claim one, false imprisonment, October 7th through October 13th, 2016, Maya Kowalski. One, did Johns Hopkins All Children's Hospital falsely imprison Maya Kowalski without legal authority under circumstances that were unreasonable and unwarranted between October 7th and October 13th, 2016? Yes. <laughs> Two, what is the total amount of Maya Kowalski's damages for the medical and psychological expenses to be incurred in the future? And following that moment, the jury went on to find the hospital liable of all of the other claims brought by the Kowalski family, including battery, medical negligence, fraudulent billing, and intentional infliction of emotional distress causing the death of Maya's mother, Beata Kowalski. As a result, Maya and her family members were awarded hundreds of millions of dollars. Let's take a listen together to some of those numbers now. Two million four hundred ninety-six thousand dollars. Three million dollars. Sixty-seven thousand two hundred dollars. One million four hundred thousand. Three million dollars. Five hundred and sixty-one thousand two hundred and ninety-eight dollars. Fifteen million dollars. Four million dollars. Eight million dollars. Eight million dollars. Eleven million dollars. Twenty-two million dollars. Fifty million dollars. And for reference, those were only a fraction of the awarded damages. It took the, uh, the clerk you saw there 18 minutes to read that entire verdict form. So in the end, the jury decided on a total of $211 million in compensatory damages, $50 million in punitive damages, grand total $261 million. For more on today's verdicts, let's go to Sarasota County, Florida. Court TV legal correspondent Chanley Painter standing by for us with the family's reaction to the verdict. Chanley, good evening. Great to be with you, Julie. As you can imagine, it was an overwhelming outpouring of emotion from verdict in compensatory stage to the verdict in the punitive phase to even speaking to the media afterwards before they left this courthouse. They said it was a relief uh, now after nearly seven years of suffering since Maya spent three months in Johns Hopkins care and, of course, the suicide of her mother, Beata. Inside the courtroom, as the verdicts were being re read for the compensatory compensatory phase and the liability phase, Julie, the family just sort of melted into each other. It was difficult to even hear a lot of the verdicts inside the courtroom because their sobs were echoing uh, from the front to the back of the room. And people in the gallery, of course, breaking down. And even a couple of jurors started to wipe tears as it took about 18 minutes for that verdict, 21-page verdict, to be read. And those jurors seemed so proud to bring that sweeping verdict to the Kowalski family afterwards. As I mentioned, they talked to the media. Here's what the Kowalskis had to say. For the first time, I feel like I got justice. And to a lot of people, that's unfortunately not something they could feel in this situation. And I'm just blessed that I could feel that for myself, for others, and for my mother. I have her engagement band on my ring finger. I have her rosary. I have this. <laughs> um, I have this necklace, which I actually gifted to her from John Hopkins Children's Hospital. And I added one pendant, which is a picture of my mom and I in Monterey, Mexico, around the time I got my killing call. Parents have rights, and they make the decision. You see Jack is saying that this case to them was about parental rights and making decisions for the health care of their children, but also they said, Julie, that this was vindication for the family, that Beata was right all along. Mm. Chinley, tell us, after 
the first phase of the trial ended. Then things moved pretty quickly into the punitive phase. Uh, you were there covering it. How did that go? Uh, take us kind of back to the courtroom at that moment in time and what the jury was then tasked with, please. Sure, a much shorter phase. They indicated on the original verdict forms for the claims of false imprisonment and battery that punitive damages or damages to punish the hospital or deter further actions of the sort uh, were warranted in this situation. So as a result, both sides were able to re-give opening statements and call witnesses. And again, a battle of the experts with the plaintiffs calling its expert, uh, the C uh, CPA, if you will, uh, to talk about this hospital's income and evaluating that they could actually afford up to a billion dollars in punitive damages. But then on cross-examination, the defense tried to poke some holes in that. Let's watch. Mr. Heath, you've known Mr. Anderson for, what, 20 years? Yes. You guys were hugging and high-fiving in the hallway, weren't you? What do you mean? Yeah, I saw you hugging and high-fiving Mr. Anderson in the hallway. Right? I high -fived him. And if they sold property that they may hold in Sarasota, Florida, where they're going to build a clinic to, for example, take care of children dying from cancer to pay this award, that would hurt the community, wouldn't Objection. it? In the defense's case, its expert, the CFO of the hospital, tried to reframe a different picture of the finances of the hospital. Ultimately, here's what the jury decided. Let's watch. We, the jury, return the following verdict in regard to punitive damages. Claim 1A, false imprisonment between October 7th and October 13th, 2016, Maya Kowalski. One, what is the total amount of punitive damages if any, which you find by the greater weight of the evidence should be assessed against Johns Hopkins All Children's Hospital for the false imprisonment of Maya Kowalski occurring between October 7th and October 13th, 2016. $15 million. Or what is the total amount of punitive damages, if any, which you find by the greater weight of the evidence should be assessed against Johns Hopkins All Children's Hospital for the false imprisonment of Maya Kowalski occurring between October 18th and October 20th, 2016. $10 million. And what is the total amount of punitive damages, if any, which you find by the greater weight of the evidence should be assessed against Johns Hopkins All Children's Hospital for the false imprisonment and battery of Maya Kowalski occurring on January 6th 2017, 25 million. And so an additional $50 million, as you mentioned, Julie, was added to the total for the Kowalski family. Really, this jury did seem to find the acts of the staffers at the hospital, particularly when they took Maya's photos, when she was didn't want those photos taken, uh, particularly egregious. Chili, tell me, after the punitive damages were then awarded by this jury, did the defense have any reaction to that? Absolutely. You could sense that they were so disappointed, Julie, inside the courtroom. And as I walked out of the courthouse with several members of the team expressing their anger, they've been working on this trial for so long and they believed in the hospital side. They didn't even offer a settlement leading up to this trial because they wanted to support mandatory reporters and the staff at the hospital. One of those attorneys did speak to the media afterwards. Here's what he had to say. We feel like we have a lot of good reasons to appeal. Um, I'm disappointed, obviously. Uh, I'm particularly disappointed for the dedicated men and women at All Children's Hospital and um, for all the hard work they put in and the good faith effort they made in the care of this patient. Uh, I'm particularly uh, disappointed in this result for them. So we can expect that appeal from this case to move forward. That's what's next. And of course, for the Kowalskis, Jack, the father, Julie said that they just need a moment to, to rest and breathe a little bit. Sure. No, understandably so. We'll see what comes next with this one. Quite a civil case, as you know. Chanley Painter live for us tonight in Florida. Thank you so much for all of that, Chanley. I want to bring in our think tank now. Joining us from Atlanta, Georgia, criminal defense attorney Eklund Mercy in Phoenix, Arizona, criminal defense attorney 
and the lawyer who represented Jody Arias, Kirk Nurmi, and in Los Angeles, California, former federal prosecutor Nima <laughs> Romani. Good evening to you all. Wonderful to have you on the show uh, all hour. Uh, let's just start with your uh, reactions uh, to the uh, verdicts today. We had the compensatory damages, the liability phase, and then, of course, the punitive damages phase. Uh, ladies first, Eklund Mercy, let me start with you, please. Your thoughts? <clears throat> Oh, I, I thought it was kind of low. I, I I expected a verdict in the um, for the plaintiff, but I honestly thought that they were giving the hospital the benefit of the, of the doubt. I think that it was a major message to hospitals, to um, to medical professionals that. Um, unfortunately, the reality is um, millions or even billions of dollars are teetering on people's uh, egos, on health professionals' egos. This could have all been avoided um, at different points of this case. And because the hospital didn't have checks and balances to ensure that justice for Maya could have been had at any stage, they this was deserved. I think that um, they will fail at appeal. They may settle, but I think that uh, the, the jury got it right. The jury definitely got it right. Kirk Nurmi, to you next, please, your reaction. I agree. I agree with that one, and especially when it comes to punitive damages. I thought after that, uh, you know, direct verdict or the, the, the actual damages of punitive would be much higher. But, you know, the hospital's trying to wrap themselves up in this mandatory reporter uh, protection and they want to appeal and they want to protect that right. But, Julie, they seem to be overlooking. I think this is something hopefully the jury probably keyed in on is the idea that how can following a doctor's instructions and prescription, even if you believe it's wrong, even if you believe the diagnosis is wrong or the ketamine is wrong, how can that be abuse? How can that be abuse? And that's the that's the conclusion Dr. Smith made. She says, I don't care what this treating physician says. I've decided this is abuse. And that got the whole ball rolling. That got the separation from her mother and ultimately, as the jury concluded, this suicide. So I think every single penny was deserved. And like Eklund, I'm surprised they didn't get more. Nim Romani, last but certainly not least, uh, your reaction to the jury's verdicts this day. I think it's a righteous verdict and the hospital should have settled like the other defendants did. They settled for $2.5 million, which was getting out cheap. These were some of the worst witnesses I've ever seen in a civil case. Righteous doctors that were unwilling to admit they did anything wrong. So, But I want to raise an important point on appeal, and I have to respectfully, I think, disagree with Eklund. Not because I think that the hospital has a good basis to appeal on the merits, but Florida has some pretty strict caps on medical malpractice damages. Half a million for cases not involving death, a million for cases involving death. Now, I know there's a lot of other claims here, intentional torts, and the plaintiff's lawyers are trying to get around those caps. But we have some conservative appellate judges in Florida appointed by Governor DeSantis, who's a big fan of tort reform. There is a very real possibility that this verdict gets reduced on appeal. And if it does, there's also caps on punitive damages in Florida, a three times factor. So later down the road, I don't want anyone to be surprised if the Kowalskis don't get the hundreds of millions of dollars they were awarded and they deserved because some of those laws there in Florida.